The American dream, which was once symbolized by the idea and aspiration of eventually buying and owning a home and reaching financial stability, is being put in mortal peril by the rapidly changing landscape of homeownership in America. We're going to dig into this issue, which is growing direr each day, and see how the actions of massive financial giants like BlackRock are affecting the lives of average, everyday Americans, and not always for the better. Background on BlackRock. BlackRock is an enormous global investment management corporation that was founded in 1988 and is headquartered in the East Coast Mecca of New York City. As one of the largest asset managers on the planet, BlackRock oversees more than $9 trillion in assets. The unavoidable reach of BlackRock in the global financial market enables it to offer a wide variety of financial and investment products to individuals, institutions, and even governments around the world. In recent years, BlackRock has begun to widen its focus to include parts of the real estate market that it simply hadn't capitalized on prior, targeting residential properties around the nation. This is seen as a strategic move on the part of the company's broader plan of adding diversification to its investment portfolio and capitalizing on the lucrative opportunities the housing sector creates for firms with significant financial muscle. One of the biggest factors that influenced BlackRock's decision to enter into the residential real estate market was the persistently low interest rates that were commonplace for several years. Central banks were also keeping their rates at near-historic lows, and that pushed BlackRock investors to find channels that were able to generate much higher returns than they were seeing in more conventional investments. Residential real estate offered them an attractive option since it generally creates stable, long-term cash flows, as well as the potential for significant ongoing capital appreciation. There's also another factor contributing to BlackRock's rapid rise in residential real estate. This is the shortage of housing that the U.S. experienced for a while. The housing shortage led to a rise in demand and sale prices, making the residential real estate market a much more appealing investment option for institutional investors looking to make a considerable profit from the growing market. To capitalize on these trends, the firm has been actively investing in residential properties, either by buying the properties outright or through real estate investment trusts REIs, that are focused on single-family homes. By doing this, BlackRock created a position for itself that made it a major player in the U.S. housing market, creating a ripple effect that will be felt by traditional home buyers and communities across the country for years to come. The Rise of Institutional Investors the trend of institutional investors buying up private homes in the U.S. market has been growing for years. These investors, which are commonly massive corporations, investment or hedge funds, and private equity firms, are purchasing residential properties in absolutely staggering quantities, frequently outbidding traditional home buyers in the profession. Several factors are known to contribute to this trend including low interest rates, the housing shortage, and the continued potential for much higher returns on investment. Low interest rates have pushed many investors to seek alternative forms of investment, like residential real estate, that can provide higher returns than bonds and other traditional assets in times of low interest rates. Additionally, the ongoing housing shortage in the U.S. has created a perpetual supply-demand imbalance, which has led to an increase in competition and an escalation in home sale prices. Institutional investors see this situation as a textbook opportunity to capitalize on the market and reap incredible profits. The impact of institutional investors on the housing market is considerable. As these investors progress in their acquisition of properties en masse, they drive up housing prices locally, which makes it far more difficult for the average home buyers to be competitive in the traditional home buying process. This process becomes even more challenging for home buyers that have special circumstances, like low-income buyers or first-time home buyers. This exacerbates the already dire housing crisis in the U.S. Moreover, the presence of institutional investors in the housing market has led to a larger overall shift in the dynamics of local communities. With more and more homes being snatched up by investors and corporations, and subsequently turned into rentals, neighborhoods, and communities that have historically been primarily owner-occupied, start to see a considerable drop in homeownership rates. This contributes to a much larger alteration of the very sense of community and stability that the residents value. BlackRock's buying spree. The rapid acquisition of BlackRock's heavily residential-focused real estate portfolio has accelerated in recent years. The company has been purchasing entire neighborhoods and creating dedicated real estate investment trusts that focus on single and smaller multifamily rental homes. This is seen as a very aggressive investment strategy that has put BlackRock in a prime position to hold major influence over the American housing market, which is continuing to make the housing affordability crisis worse. For example, in many neighborhoods across the country, 
BlackRock has been seen buying up homes at a record pace, often paying substantial amounts more than fair market value. According to Slate.com, comma, this is because while normal people typically pay a mortgage interest rate between 2% and 4% these days, invitation homes can borrow money for far less. It's getting billion-dollar loans at interest rates around 1.4%. In practice, this means that invitation homes can afford to tack on an extra $5,000 to $20,000 to the purchase price of every home, while getting the house at the same actual cost as a typical homeowner. This has a twofold effect on the local housing market. First, it prices out the average American home buyer, particularly when going through the conventional home buying process. Secondly, it disrupts and damages the very fabric of those communities, as many long standing residents are forced to sell their homes and relocate due to skyrocketing costs. In many of these cases, BlackRock has faced accusations of contributing to what's known as blockbusting. This is what it's called when a single entity, like a single investor or landlord, purchases many homes in a neighborhood, causing property values to suddenly spike, then sells the properties at a substantial profit. Fox News even reports that BlackRock, led by billionaire Lawrence Fink, is purchasing entire neighborhoods and converting single-family homes into rentals. While in cities like Houston, investors like Fink account for one quarter of the home purchasers. Blockbusting is known to lead to rapid gentrification, which displaces lower-income residents and fundamentally changes the underlying character and history of the community. BlackRock's immense real estate holdings have also raised some concerns over their level of influence with local housing markets. Holding such a large portion of the market at large, BlackRock has the potential to manipulate housing prices and average rental rates, which can make housing affordability issues even worse for the average American. Their role in the housing affordability crisis is even further complicated by the fact that the company is the pension fund manager for millions of Americans. As a fiduciary, the BlackRock firm is legally obligated to operate and act in the best interests of its clients, which may include investment into residential real estate markets to generate the strong returns that they owe its clients. The problem is that this creates a fundamental conflict of interest since the company's real estate investments contribute to the very same affordability crisis that substantially negatively impacts the financial well-being of the clients whose pensions it manages. Now you can see how BlackRock's aggressive residential real estate investments have led to significant consequences for the greater U.S. housing market, with rising home prices, pricing out individual home buyers, and general disruption of communities across the country. Let's talk about what these consequences mean for the American dream. Consequences for the American dream. The rapidly changing housing market, fueled in no small part by the actions of BlackRock and other companies like them, has caused significant changes and consequences for the American dream. As home prices continue to soar and home buying competition grows more intense, achieving the dream of home ownership becomes more and more of a pipe dream for many average Americans. And with the most vulnerable home buying demographics being first time buyers and low income families, those same populations are some of the most deeply affected by these market changes. These market changes are also leading to a larger overarching transition from home ownership to renting, as more and more people are priced out of buying a home. This will have long-term implications for those concerned with wealth building and creating financial stability since home ownership has traditionally been one of the cornerstone components of the American dream. This shift toward renting can lead to individuals and entire families missing out on some of the key benefits of home ownership, including building equity in a property, benefiting from tax deductions associated with home ownership, and enjoying a far greater sense of security and stability, not to mention control over their living arrangements. Additionally, this decline in home ownership may end up having much more more broad implications for American society as a whole. Home ownership has long been associated with increased civic engagement, more positive educational outcomes for children, and stronger overall community ties. As more people are forced into a life of renting, these benefits may diminish over time, possibly even degrading the fabric of neighborhoods and communities. This also begs the larger question, if home ownership is no longer a part of an achievable American dream, what does that mean for Americans and even America as a whole? What does it say about our country if large corporations can facilitate pricing Americans out of the very dream the country stands for. Big questions for sure. Big enough that they may need their video. So let's move on for now. As we examine and consider the existing, ongoing, and potential consequences of the changing housing market on the American dream, it's also critical to look at potential solutions 
alternatives or workarounds that may be able to help minimize or completely mitigate these effects and ensure that the dream of homeownership remains alive and attainable for future generations to enjoy.